so uh, next we will take up the damping so in the previous session we have considered the spring mount system where the damping is absent but in this case we will consider the damping so when we consider the uh, damping the vibration will reduce so how it affects and how it reduce and uh, 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 and the amount of damping also you know influences the final vibration and its amplitude also we will see all those in this session so this is the system and initially we have taken a uh, mass m uh, and uh, when we attach mass m to the damping and uh, uh, this is spring system so because of this uh, mass it will you know settle down uh, by stretching this uh, initial position you know um, delta so this is the a position and this is b b is the equilibrium position and c so b is the equilibrium position so when the system in the equilibrium position so we know the force is acting in this in this system so mg is acting in the downward direction and the spring force is acting in the upward direction that is a k into delta so delta is the initial initial displacement of the spring and uh, we have already seen while deriving the essential concept for, the, for this spring and damper system that uh, the force in the damper the force in the damper fc equal to c into x dot so x dot means its velocity but here in this equilibrium position this mass is uh, not moving and it's at the you know equilibrium position that means it's at rest that means here x dot equal to 0 at the equilibrium position equal to 0 so when the system at the equilibrium position there is only one force acting and compensating the gravity force that is the spring force so here at equilibrium what we can write is mg equal to k into delta and again if you can recollect from the previous session so whenever the mg equal to k delta in the final r while deriving the differential equation we can neglect g comma delta terms we can neglect g and delta terms uh, this is the datum line and it is stretched delta from the datum line when it is in the equilibrium position so now what i do is i will give some small perturbation or the displacement in the downward direction so i will take at this instant where this bottom is at a distance of x x from this position so at this position i will see uh, what are the forces that are acting on the mass so this is a mass and mg is neglected here because uh, we we consider mg mg equal to k delta so x uh, acceleration mx double dot is acting in the downward direction and uh, actually here the mass m is in the motion so whenever there is a motion apart from the spring force there would be a damping force also and the damping force equal to c into x dot that means velocity that is a um, opposing the motion of the spring or motion of the mass that is why we are keeping the damp and if you want to know further you just refer, refer to the our previous session and uh, this is the k into x so from the newton newton formula f equal to m a so here m a equal to m means to x double dot equal to this is moving in the down downward direction x double dot is in the downward direction but these forces are in the upward direction so negative sign will come c into x dot plus minus k into x so finally this will become m x double dot c x dot plus k x but uh, this is a second order linear differential equation that we have already seen so whenever such type of differential equation comes we know how to solve this one and this is exactly like the previous one where we when we don't consider this uh, damping but only term that is added when we consider damping is the c into x dot so this is a solution and we consider x of t so the variation of the displacement with respect to the time t or we consider it d into e power st and i will substitute this you know uh, this term in the equation let's say this is a one so this is the equation and uh, either this term can become zero or uh, this also could be uh, zero but if this becomes zero then we will get a trivial solution that means a zero solution but we want non-trivial solution so that means this coefficient should become zero so when the coefficient becomes zero 
and um, if you can recall the, uh, from our basic formula that is uh, when you have a x square plus uh, b x plus c equal to 0 the roots are uh, minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4 a c by 2 a so in the same term here i can write s equal to minus c plus or minus square root of c square minus 4 m k by 2 m solutions for a linear differential equation actually follow the principle of superimposition so final solution can be written uh, can be written as a, you know uh, d into e power s1 t plus uh, d1 and uh, d2 into e power s2 t okay. but here the one interesting uh, observation that we can make uh, from the previous one is this this term the square root term so in the previous one there is no square root term but here we have a square root term so the type of uh, vib vibrational motion executed by this mass system this system would be depending on the this uh, this term c square minus 4 mk so we will consider different cases and see how this uh, uh, the inside term would affect the type of you know uh, nature of the motion so this is our solution and uh, we wa we want to see the you know um, value of this uh, value inside the square root we want to see how this value inside the square root affect the nature of the motion so in the first case we will take this uh, value inside the square root is zero so when it becomes zero that means the damping the damping applied is a critical damping so this term is becoming zero for the critical damping so let's say that is a cc equal to k by m is omega n omega n square so this may this, this would become so this would become like you know more 2m omega n so when the when the you know uh, inside term is zero then you, we will get the critical damping for this uh, for this term and uh, if, apart from this one if i want to see the final solution of this one x of t equal to or if i substitute this value in this one so s1 comma 2 it will become simply minus e by 2m in the both cases e by 2m so and uh, this s12 are nothing but uh, here x of t we consider as a d into e power s t and uh, this is the exponential so if you substitute s 1 comma 2 in this exponential form so we simply get uh, some exponential form here exponential form that means this this uh, no uh, motion or the amplitude of the motion gradually decreases because this is a negative sign as time increases when time approaches infinity so x of uh, x of t approaches uh, zero here because this is an exponential and there is no periodic motion here because there is no uh, cos or cosine term in the solution i, I also define one more term called you know, um, damping ratio damping ratio that's a xi equal to damping coefficient by critical damping coefficient this is a non-dimensional because these both you know units are same so it will become non-dimensional why we want to define some non-dimensional because unnecessarily we are bringing in some other new variable so always this non-dimensional defining any equation or converting any equation into non-dimensional form is uh, very useful because it will unnecessarily reduces the number of variables present in that particular equation and uh, it's uh, also easy to compare if you have a nine dimension form how to compare that one for example I, I would like to consider here some you know item one item one and uh, item two these base pairs are for example this is a uh, something like a 600 rupees and this is a uh, 800 rupees so 
now i have given a discount of 50 rupees on this one and uh, here 60 rupees so which item has given more discount so if you go by absolute values of course definitely you will say that item 2 has given more discount but uh, if you compare you know um, always in absolute terms we cannot derive in a but you know uh, yeah, appreciable appreciable conclusion so in that case what i do is instead of absolute values i will take some non dimensional ratio that means here percentage of discount equal to the amount of discount given that is 50 into base rate 600 in terms of percentage it will become 8.2 33. That means for every 100 rupees they have given you know, 8.33 rupees of the discount. And if I calculate the same percentage discount here for the item 2, it will get, uh, become 60 by 800. This will come around 7.5%. That means for every 100 rupees here, only 7.5 rupees has a uh, discounted. But if you compare in the absolute terms, so there is a chance that you know we uh, conclude item two has given a more discount. But if you only if you can, you know calculate percentage of the discount in the non-dimensional form, then only we realize that uh, item actually in fact this is the item one which has provided more discount. So in this way, we even uh, in the vibration analysis also. If you have two system, system 1 and system 2 vibrating systems and uh, if you want to compare the, if you want to compare the, uh, a, you know, either, you know, uh, amplitude or uh, some other damping for these two systems, then uh, we cannot compare in the absolute terms because in the absolute terms we cannot, you know, uh, determine whether it's here really given the, uh, you know, um, predictable or um, uh, I mean reliable, um, reliable conclusion. So in a start, if you could, if you could convert our final equation into some non-dimensional form, then definitely that will give us some reliable comparison between the two systems. So now we will take a case two. So in the case two, the c by 2m let's say this this value as a delta I, I call it as a delta so in the case 2 if in the case 2 if delta is greater than 0 that means this is a greater than 0 so whenever it is a greater than 0 it will give two positive numbers two positive uh, positive number plus or my, uh, I mean two positive numbers here so two positive numbers and uh, we already know x of x of t equal to nothing but this one and if you substitute two positive numbers here one is a negative i mean one is a minus one and uh, one is a positive one it could be either you know both are either both can become positive or either both can become negative or uh, one can become negative and one can become positive anything can happen but here also you know the system is exponentially decreasing exponentially decreases or increases depending on the values but uh, as t you know uh, in, as t approaches infinity this this will this will uh, become zero why because most of the cases the amplitude never increases but uh, always decreases so here also there is no repeating terms like a cos and sin that means here also they, it is a not a harmonic harmonic in nature so in the first case and as well as in the second place the motion is the motion nature of the motion is exponential and it is decreasing as t is increasing 